It's nighttime in the big city. A man tries to wash the lipstick off his collar in the men's room sink. It's hard to find a legitimate masseuse around here. It's Theme Time Radio Hour with your host, Bob Dylan. Hello once again, and welcome back to Theme Time Radio Hour. Christmas is right around the corner, and for you long-time listeners, that can mean just one thing. It's time for our annual countdown show. Well, this year, things are a little different. We're surrounded by numbers. I got my phone number, my social security number, my address, my driver's license. I'm a local 802. I was number seven in the deli line today. Heck, I still remember my first girlfriend's birthday. But so far in Theme Time Radio Hour, we've only dealt with the numbers from one to ten. So this year, instead of counting down from ten to zero, we're going to look at the law of large numbers and go from eleven up. We're going to start with the number that's more than just a number. It's three numbers that might define heaven. It's by a man who worked as a chauffeur for B.B. King and a valet for Roscoe Gordon. He did pretty well on his own, though, and he's singing a song about a numerical description of feminine pulpitude. It's 36, 22, 36 by Bobby Blue Bland. And listen to this record. I always wanted an introduction like this for myself. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the man. I mean the man. The sensational. The incomparable. The dynamic Bobby, Bobby Bland. My baby, she looks so fine. 36, 22, 36. Eyes on, hands off, but she's mine, all mine. 36, 22, 36. My baby, she looks so good. Steal her if you only could. 36, 22, 36. She looks so good from her head to feet. 36, 22, 36. My girl can be tied, but she can be beat. record label where the smart money always was 36 22 36 you might think that those are perfect bobby down dimensions but you would be wrong if bobby was a real person she would be six feet tall and weigh only a hundred pounds her measurements would be 39 19 33 her neck would be twice the length of an average person's and she would wear a size three children's shoe 
If she was life size, she wouldn't be able to walk with those tiny feet in her top heavy frame. And she couldn't have both a trachea and an esophagus because her neck was too narrow. She would have to choose between breathing and eating. With a figure like that, I'm guessing she's going to choose breathing. Barbie, beautiful Barbie, I'll make believe that I am you. You can tell it's Mattel. It's swell. It's our one in a million show here on Theme Time Radio Hour, where we subscribe to the wisdom of James Thurber, who said, there's no safety in numbers or in anything else. Here's a number that was unlucky for a man, 30, when it was counted out in silver. We'll tell you that story in a minute. I'm guessing some of you already know it, but first listen to the song. 30 Pieces of Silver by the legendary boxing kingstonian, a regular visitor here at Theme Time Radio Hour, Prince Buster. and 30 pieces of silver. Judas Iscariot would receive 30 pieces of silver in exchange for betraying Jesus. He identified Jesus in front of the Roman soldiers by kissing him. Recently, the gospel of Judas was restored, authenticated, and translated. It said there that Judas was Jesus' closest friend, and Jesus knew that he needed to be betrayed to free him from his human body. He asked his best friend, Judas, to be the one rather than have it being done by an enemy. Judas is probably the reason that 13 is considered such an unlucky number. There were 13 people present at the Last Supper, the 12 apostles and the guest of honor. Judas was the 13th, and up until the Gospel of Judas, he was considered unlucky indeed. While we're going biblical, a popular number in the Bible is the number 40. The flood lasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Many of the judges ruled for forty years. Saul, David, and Solomon were each king for forty years. The spies were in Canaan for forty days. Elijah fasted for forty days. Moses was in Egypt for forty years. On the mountain for forty days. Well, you get the idea. I can give you lots more examples. But why forty? Well, some people say that it's a round number in the scriptures, denoting roughly a generation. 
and others say it was the highest number that was commonly counted to in those days. They say when you see 40, you should just think of it as many. So here's many waters with many days and many nights, not to be confused with the Mennonites, who are also in the Bible. 40 days, 40 nights, since my baby left this town. waters and 40 days and 40 nights here on theme time radio hour and it's old france knew his way around some numbers he said this about america america where thanks to congress there are 40 million laws to enforce the 10 commandments that works out to 400,000 laws to each commandment i told tom waits we're doing a show about numbers and he dashed off another cassette let's hear what tom has to say hey bob tom here Thanks again for the Christmas card. And the marmalade was just out of this world, man. Um, the expression baker's dozen originated with King Henry the Seventh of England. He ordered bakers who sold underweight loaves to be beheaded. And so, in order to save their necks, bakers began the practice of adding an extra loaf to each order of 12 loaves just to be sure. So there. Thanks, Tom. Laddie Moore is a little known country singer, and that's a shame, because he's quite good. He wrote the song Juke Joint Johnny, which a number of people have covered, and he co-wrote with George Jones. His biggest hit was his own 1962 single, Drunk Again. Good name for a country song. But this one, which fits in our theme of numbers, is one he recorded in the 50s. It's called 100,000 Women. Can't be wrong. Tell us about it, Letty. You say I'm not good looking, but you must be mistook because a hundred thousand women can't be wrong. You don't like my kissing, you say there's something missing, but a hundred thousand women can't be wrong. When I asked you for a kiss, well, you just turned me Like my loving, or my turtle loving, but a hundred thousand. 
just turn me down But when it comes to loving I'm the best there is in town You say that in my big blue eyes You don't find no paradise But a hundred thousand women Can't be wrong I seem to enjoy on our countdown show are the little number puzzles. I got a doozy for you here. Get a pencil and a piece of paper, because this is definitely one you can't just hold in your head. I want you to select a three-digit number. The only thing is the first number and the last number have to differ by at least two. Now make a second number by reversing the order of digits in the first number. Subtract the smaller of these two from the larger. You now have a third number. Reverse the number of those digits and add those two together. You're going to get a four-digit number. Add each of those digits up individually and you get the number 18. Amazing, isn't it? Well, subtract three from 18 and you get 15. And 15 could get you 20 if you're talking about a girl 15. Why don't I let Floyd Dixon tell you all about it? Another girl 15, that's too young, you know. Love a girl 15, that's too young, you know. When the police come, no, I'll have to go. Well, I'm 15, but I'm not green. So come on, daddy, let's keep it clean. That's why I like them young. When there is their pride Love you and thrill you Most in the old time When she gets 21 That's too old, you know When she gets 21 That's too old, you know When they get that old They're no use to me anymore Girl 15. Floyd was a West Coast piano player, worked as a drugstore clerk in a golf caddy. You probably remember most from his song Hey Bartender. 
but Billy Vera worked with him and remembers it quite fondly. Billy, tell us about Floyd Dixon. I invited Floyd over to Capitol Recording Studios when I was putting together a double CD set of his recordings. And he had a memory. He was almost like a savant. He could remember numbers, telephone numbers, addresses, dollar amounts for which he was paid for gigs, for royalties. And he also remembered every musician that played on every session that he ever did. Floyd was just an amazing guy. Well, thanks, Billy. Well, aside from age, the other thing we've been talking about seems to be the Bible. And if this next song was written in biblical times, it'd be called Two Cubits, because a cubit is 18 inches. And this next song is called 36 Inches High. It's by a man from New Orleans who made his way to California in 1966. He ended up on the Delphi record label and later recorded a well-known album called Highland County, which featured James Burton, Jim Keltner, and Dr. John. So here's Jim Ford with a song that you're going to say after you hear it. What do you say? 36 inches high. Once I was a soldier I rode on a big white horse Silver pistols at my side Carrying the flags of war And I lost track of the men that fell When the cannons roared Lord, I never got over Being a soldier Once I was a tax man Collected dollars and dimes I listened to the rich man grumble Lord, I heard the poor man cry Some few couldn't afford to pay Were put to the shackle and key Oh, I don't understand Being a tax man Once I was a ruler About twelve inches long Three times me made a yardstick Thirty-six inches high Thirty-six inches high was I Thirty-six inches high I never got over Thirty-six inches high What'd he say? (laughs) That was Jim Ford, 36 Inches High, a song that leaves you at the end strangely satisfied, but still wondering. Jim sings about being 36 inches high, when he's got 9 inches on Billy Barty, who was 3 foot 9, or 45 inches high. Billy's one of those guys, you can't quite place the name, but the second you see the face, you know him. He's been in about a million movies, including Out All Night, Gold Diggers in 1933, and the film noir classic, Midgets in Shadow. He was a regular performer on the Spike Jones television program. In 1953, he founded the Little People in America organization, reaching out to help people of smaller stature. Up until the dying day in the year 2000, Billy believed that height wasn't nothing but a number. Our next artist is one of only three performers that we play on Theme Time Radio Hour who had his face on a bag of flour. King Biscuit Flour presents Sonny Boy Williamson and his King Biscuit Entertainers each day Monday through Friday. Now, friends, the King Biscuit Entertainers want to play your favorite songs so you can have a special request. Just write it down on a postcard or letter and mail it to King Biscuit Time. Post office box 409 Helena, Arkansas. If you think you know the other two, make sure and take the Theme Time Radio Hour quiz, available now online. There's no prizes to speak of. We're just trying to gather some information on our listeners. So here's the pride of Helena, Arkansas, Sonny Boy Williamson. Darling, you know exactly what happened last year just about this time. Yes, you know exactly what happened Last year just about this time You asked me for one hundred dollars And I didn't have but ninety-nine The 
little gun just because she's so nice and kind. I'm in love, I'm in love with your little girl just because she's so nice and kind. I was so sorry when she asked me for $100. I couldn't give her but 99. Sonny Boy Williamson and 99. For those of you who shop around the world, there are versions of the 99 cent store everywhere. In the United Kingdom, they're called the two pound shop. You can go to the 100 yen shop in Japan. The 100 forintos boat if you're in Hungary. If you're visiting Puerto Rico, stop in at Todo a Piso. And for our friends in Norway, we'll meet you at the Max 20 store. This is Theme Time Radio Hour, and today's theme is numbers. Count your blessings. Toots Hibbert formed the Maytales in 1962. They recorded for Clement Cox and Dodd. They had a falling out with him when they found out he was selling the Maytale singles overseas under a variety of names. In 1966, Toots was arrested for possession of marijuana, got an 18 month jail term, and on a show of loyalty, the rest of the Maytales didn't record without him. When he got out of prison, the three of them went into the studio with Leslie Kahn and recorded our next song. 5446 was my number, and yes, that was Toots' prison number. He believed that he was arrested because of his Rastafarian religious beliefs, and it was a political act when he refused to give the guard his prison number. So here's that jailbird, Toots Hibbert, along with the loyal Mike Dells, and 5446 was my number.
Tits and the Maytales, 5446. What is his number? Let's look at a piece of email right now. Today's email comes to us from Little Rock, Arkansas. A listener named Donald Speedo writes, Hey Bob, love the show. Long time listener, first time writer. I love all the love songs you play, and I have a question for you. I suspect my girlfriend is up to some hanky-panky. I've read about a place where I can give her social security number, and they'll get me all of her emails. I'm just about to do it. Do you think it's a good idea? Sincerely yours, Donald Speedo, Little Rock, Arkansas. Well, Donald, it's a little out of my field, but I'm always happy to weigh in with an opinion. Now me, I'm not the suspicious sort, so I probably wouldn't even suspect my gal of any hanky-panky. But once hanky-panky gets into your brain pan, you gotta do something or it's gonna haunt you. I would suggest an honest heart-to-heart talk with the lady, because think about it. You're sneaking around getting all of her email because you think that she's sneaking around. All this sneaking around just causes a vicious cycle and no good can come of it. I never heard about a company that can get all of somebody's email, but I'm not at all surprised. I mean, there's no privacy anymore. You can track down anything by anybody. I heard of a place. You give them your phone number and they'll tell you what you had for lunch today. Keep listening, Donald, and don't send me any more emails. We started off today with Bobby Bland giving you his numerical interpretation of the perfect figure. Well, here's a group of gentlemen who have a contrasting opinion. And like horseshoes, it's a game of inches. There's only a couple of inches different in a couple of these measurements and a little bit of a wider difference as we settle down to the bottom. But as they say in the cigarette ad, it's the most important inch in smoking. Here are the showmen featuring General Johnson with 39, 21, 46. A slightly different shape on a slightly different woman. A man after my own heart. You are so beautiful. You're such a sight to see. You're the girl for me. You set my soul apart. Filling my heart with one desire Wanting to be with you You could make a blind man see You could make a crippled man walk You could make the quietest man in the world talk (laughs) Nobody else will do Every little boy in town wants to get his arms around you, 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 but no one else will do. But you, with your thirty-nine, twenty-one, forty shape, yes, you got me going hate and hate over you. It's hard.
21 artists sing. Mm. Yes, you got me going ape with an ape over you. <laughs> That was the showman with 39, 21, 46, describing a woman who some might say is Rubenesque. Named after the art of the Flemish painter, Peter Paul Rubens. Not to be confused with Paul Rubens, who wears a tight gray suit and a red bow tie and sometimes goes by the name of Pee Wee Herman. This Rubens is considered one of the most important artists of the 17th century. His series of 20 paintings featuring King Henry IV and Marie de Medici is the source of the term Rubenesque. Other terms would be voluptuous, curvaceous, Zoftic also works. Fat, but that would be said by people who are jealous. The people who say that don't understand. The sweeter the meat, the gooser the gander. Summer of 69 Todd Rhodes was a piano player and an arranger from McKinney's Cotton Pickers. Other guys in the band with him were Benny Carter, Coleman Hawkins, Rex Stewart, John Cheatham, and John Cheatham. In 1946, he proved that he was adaptable, switching over to R&B and playing on a lot of hit records by artists such as Juan Only Harris and Clean Hand Vincent. His song Blues for the Red Boy, which is that thing you're hearing in the background, was a number four R&B hit and became one of the theme songs for Adam Freed's original Moondog show, back when he was still in Cleveland. This next song features Connie Allen on vocals and is from 1952. I don't know how they got this one past the censors. Here's Todd Rhodes and Connie Allen inviting you to take a little trip on the Rocket 69. Rocket 69, 
here on Theme Time Radio Hour, where our days are numbered. We played Joe Mooney once before. It was actually on our first countdown show, and it seemed like a good time to revisit him. He's a blind accordion player who was born in Patterson, New Jersey. Among his fans, he could count Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett. He had a quartet that played kind of a Nat Cole-influenced, jivey jazz sound. Here's the Joe Mooney Quartet singing all about a man with one million dollars. I know a man with one million dollars. I wonder why he's blue. Cause the man with one million dollars should be happy as a guy with two. But the man with two million dollars is grabbing for more and more. Like the guy with three million dollars who's unhappy cause it isn't far. They can only wear one suit at a time, even if they have a lot. They can only eat one meal at a time, no matter how much they've got. I don't envy a man with a million, I'm happy as a guy can be. With a gal who's one in a million, let the millionaires envy me, Jack. Let them envy me. You know they all get cars, they all get yachts, most of them get ulcers. When stocks go down all over town, they all get bromo seltzers. Despite their gold when they get old, they go like Tom and Jerry. And who wants to be the richest guy in some cemetery? <laughs> They pitch a ball on Wednesday night, even as you and I. But they can't hang over Thursday, cause you know why? It's the maid's day off. If you put ten guys on a desert island, give them each a C note. Next time you look by hook or crook, one guy's got a G note. The loot's all gone, but they go on. What a situation. Now they've got the schmo with all the dough in a jug. Tax evasion. So you see, you don't need a million. Happiness is up to you. Do I envy the guy with a million? You can bet your life I do, Jack. Sure we do, don't you, Jack? You can bet your will keep button I do. That was the Joe Mooney Quartet. Telling you all about a guy who's got a gal who's one in a million. But you know what they say about being one in a million? In New York City alone, there's 11 of you. They say the good things come in small packages. Well, here's a little lady. She's small in size, but she oozes self confidence, as well as pure cane sugar. Here's Ann Peebles singing a song all about herself 99 pounds, or as they call it in Hollywood, chubby.
That was Ann Peebles in 99 pounds. Every time I see her name, I think she's Fred Finstone's daughter. She got her stunt like a lot of singers did, singing with her family's gospel choir, the People's Choir. There's a saying, make a mountain out of a molehill. Well, that saying has been traced back to Erasmus, who said that, and I quote, the sophists of Greece could, through their copiousness, make an elephant of a fly or a mountain out of a molehill. But what's good for the sophists is good for us. From a 99-pound molehill to a 300-pound mountain of a man, here's Chester Arthur Burnett, Holland Wolf, with 300 pounds of joy, a song about the pleasures of having ample avatupois. Have your fun Take me baby For your little boy To get 300 pounds Of a heavenly joy oh, This is it This is it Look what you get some other folks who were famously corpulent. Winston Churchill. As a matter of fact, the bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki, Japan, was called the Fat Man, supposedly named after the British Prime Minister. The notorious B.I.G. was so big, he had B.I.G. in his knee. There's Refrigerator Perry, Jackie Gleason, Alfred Hitchcock, and President Taft, our fattest president. They all took pride in casting a large shadow. we're on the subject of numbers, let's talk about the number 60. 60 minutes make an hour, and we've been here just about that long, which means we gotta get out of here in a second. Let me play you one more song, and I like this next song because it's educational. I'm not gonna tell you about the band because we played it before. I won't tell you about the guy who wrote it. He's a guy that never gave up. His name's Jack Butwell, and he made an album called I Love Florida. He never made much money from music, he just loved music. He drove a panel truck and sold sandwiches out of it. He gave pony rides. He 
try his luck with a sign shop, a used furniture store, and two different meat markets. He finally made his bones when he bought a dump truck and founded the Butwell Stone and Soil Company. He made a good living, but never from music. Lou Gehrig's disease claimed him at age 48. And IBQ heard some of his local records and recorded more than one of them. This one turned out especially well. For those of you who are not musically inclined, it'll help you count out the number 12 that you can find in many types of blues. It's entertaining and it's educational. Here are the 12 by blues. song John Lee Hooker never heard, 12 Bar Blues, written by Jack Butwell and performed by NRBQ. They told you about 12 bars, here's far more than I like. If you're down in Birmingham, Alabama, stop by for Rojo, it's Spanish for red. Whenever I'm in Burlington, Vermont, I quaff a few at the Three Needs. There's the Met Cafe in Little Rhodey, and of course, if it's 12 noon and you follow the shadow of the Abernathy building, you'll find yourself at Elmo's Lounge, and luckily for you, they open at noon. I know I said that was going to be our last song, but while I was playing, I remembered a song by Merle Haggard. Merle writes about everything. He writes about being in jail. He writes about being out of jail. He writes about romance. He writes about what's in the news. And when he hits personal milestones, you know he's going to be writing about that too. Here's one he wrote about being on this earth for 65 years. Here's Merle Haggard, life's musical reporter, at Come On 65. Well, somewhere on the old Kern River, there's an old cane hole that waits for me. Patiently. This city dog might drag me down, but one fine day I'm gonna be set free. Wait and see. And then I'm gonna go down to where the waters touch the sky Where the old men's laughter echoes like a lullaby Sixty-five, come on, sixty-five It's a sin to waste my life away But I can't wait till I'm sixty-five Come on, 
65 There's a gold watch if I get out of line Past 65 I somewhere in my memory I recall a boy 17 Full of dreams Dreams and life just stripped away Layer at a time Now what's left Ain't hardly me Oh, but I saved up a little Here and there to get me by Enough to mend my ragged wings And once again I'll fly at 65 Come on, 65 it's a sin to waste my life away But I can't wait till I'm 65 Come on, 65 Lord, the object of the game is to survive At 65 I've heard it said that hard work never did a body's body any harm <laughs> Well, they were wrong Cause all these years of lifting things I should have left alone And took their toll But my will was strong And the day that I walk out of here I'll hold my head up high Then I'll pawn this stupid watch And just kiss 30 years goodbye For 65 Come on, 65 it's a sin to waste my life away But I can't wait till I'm 65 Come on, 65 There's a gold watch if I get out of line At 65 I somewhere on that old Kern River There's an old cane pole that waits for me Patiently That was Merle Haggard and Come On 65. Merle, I hope I'm here when you're singing Come On 165. Well, that's about it for this week's show. We're going to go on a little break for a while and spend Christmas with our friends and family. I'll probably be playing some repeats for you so you can catch up on some ones you haven't heard. But we'll be back after the first of the year. All new themes, brand new dreams, and the same old schemes. So be happy, be healthy, have a happy holiday, and we'll see you on the backside. Adios. 23 Skidoo. Thanks for listening to Theme Time Radio Hour with your host, Bob Dylan. Produced by Eddie Gorodetsky and the associate producer is Anita Fitzgerald. Continuity is by Eats Martin and the editor is Damian Rodriguez. The supervising editor is Rob McCumber. The research team is Diane Lapson and Bernie Bernstein with additional research courtesy of Lynn Sheridan, April Hayes, Callie Gladden, Terrence Michael, Sean Patrick, and Matthew Meltzer. Robert Bauer was the librarian and the production coordinator was Debbie Sweeney. Special thanks go out to Randy Azradi, Coco Shinomiya, Simpsons Diner, and Lee Abrams. Tex Carbone was our director of studio operations. Recorded in Studio B of the historic Abernathy building, the crown jewel of the city skyline. It's a great water park production in association with Big Red Tree. This is your announcer, Pierre Mancini, speaking. Join us again next week for a special encore presentation of Christmas. Christmas.